So I wasn't uh, raised typically white. Um, obviously, I'm not black either, but I wasn't typically white. I was just poor. I grew up, um, first uh, seven years of my life, I grew up in the projects in Brooklyn, uh, particularly the, uh, the Brookline projects in Canarsie. I also grew up in uh, projects over in Bay Ridge. I forgot the name of that. But the funny thing was that when I was there long ago, I did, never recalled any black people there. It was like, I think when I moved to the suburbs, I saw more black people. I mean, they were there. I mean, but it was just like, so I really did not know that I was not your typical white guy. I mean, there are some times I actually thought I was black. But for your benefit, I won't rap. Um, no, I'm not, not that sort of stuff. Um, actually, um, I, I like, uh, I mean, I grew up on black music, don't get me wrong. Fishbone, The Bad Brains, the one half of uh, Rage Against the Machine. So yeah, I grew up that you know I grew up that way, and I do listen to rap and hip hop. I listened to hip hop before um, Britney Spears ruined it, and uh, yeah, I I got into mumble rap before it was mumble rap. Uh, KRS One and uh, De La Soul, and of course uh, Tribe Called Quest, uh, because they were. Actually, it wasn't mumbled. It was speaking big words, which for me with authentic expression was very important. So I love it when uh, I love it when they were actually talking like five dollar words and rap songs. It was like cool. And so I was just and again, I'm not going to rap for you because that would be that would blow things out of proportion. I'm just not that cool in a way. But like I said, I uh, I listened to. Here's the thing, I was one of the few people, few white people that actually knew that black people invented rock and roll. One of the few people, white, white people that actually knew that. And it was funny because I was in an apartment living in Buffalo at the time. And I was on the top floor. It was one of those little rooms and everything. And I was just sitting back and I heard somebody downstairs from me blasting. Not playing, but blasting, which wasn't a bad thing. It was Iron Maiden. This person was playing the entire Number of the Beast album. Okay? I mean, Run to the Hills and all that. And, uh, you know, Number of the Beast. And, you know, all the really good, you know, Maiden songs. And I was just, like, floored that I'm hearing this. So I go downstairs, knock on the door, because I want to thank the guy. I shake this guy's hand because I haven't heard that in a long time. And a black guy opened the door. And he's like, hey, what's going on? And I said, hey, I'll, I'll, I, I blow away by the fact that you love Maiden. I said, thanks, man. You know, I, 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 I'm glad you appreciate it because nobody thinks I'd love to have a metal, but I do. And I said, yeah, it's cool. It's all right. Everybody loves, everybody loves metal. It's awesome. So yeah. Wait a second. Do you know so-and-so? Yeah. Well, don't tell him I listen to Iron Maiden. He don't really know, you know, so... That's the thing. It's like, when you catch somebody listening to some kind of music that normal white people listen to, they always say, well, don't tell him I listen to that. I said to him, I said, your secret's safe with me, man. So, yeah. Um, and that's the thing about, like, uh, you know, and... You know, you have to bust down the myths of, like, white people, black people, because they're just myths, okay? First of all, for example, um, we don't, I never heard of any white person who put raisins in potato salad. I have not worn, I don't know where that rumor came from, but we do not put raisins in potato salad. Now, tuna and macaroni, tuna and macaroni salad, yeah, because it's really good if you put tuna and macaroni salad. And I don't care if it's a white thing. I love it. Um, and those, like, dried onion pieces on top of it. I mean, primo, man. But it's another thing. And that's the thing. It's, like, I just, like, um, I, I just like every type of, like, uh, 
Because not only I like every type of thing, I like every type of people. I mean, and yes, black lives matter. I'm all for it. Everybody's lives matter. Notice that they don't talk about Eskimo lives matter. Are you in with the Inuits? But, um, but no, everybody's lives matter, especially black lives. And um, actually, I just uh, saw, you know, a couple weeks ago, I saw that thing about um, about uh, Birmingham. Now, Birmingham, Alabama, back in uh, 1963, it was We Shall Overcome. Last week, in 2023, is We Shall Kick Your Ass. And here's the thing. I actually, I actually took African American history in college. Um, because two things. I was hoping to get, a, I was hoping to get like a, a good grade, like an A or a B. Got an A minus. And also, I wanted to get laid. That never happened, so but I got A minus, so that was, so that was the thing with me, and uh, and the thing is that I had a black teacher growing up in school. His name was Mr. Yun. In sixth grade, I had a guy named Mr. Yun, and he was from Alabama of all places, and he taught me all kinds of stuff, and it really opened my mind. As a ten year old kid, he blew my mind, and uh, I was just like, wow, and. And like I said, it's just like a lot of, you don't really know that a lot of facets of like quote-unquote American history or quote-unquote white history has a black background. Um, here's the thing, I'm into punk and goth. Like, I love punk rock. I love goth and everything. And there's some black punk rockers. Like I said, Bad Brains. Really awesome punk rock band. And I actually know a black goth. It's true. I actually know a black goth. I, and she's really into goth and everything, but she's black. She's really into it. She's always naked. But that's that's just me and everything. But but yeah, so growing up was just interesting to me. Um when I was a kid, I um my mother again, this was like when we were in the project and everything, and there were mainly white people in the projects, okay? And my mom didn't want me to, didn't want to associate with the people there or even the neighbors. So one time, so once upon a time, she took me, I was like about maybe four or five years old, went to a black neighborhood. It was like, she had, uh, she had what they call a voucher, a government voucher, which means that you got this list and they'll give you stuff. The thing about black neighborhoods, they give you more stuff than your typical white neighborhood stuff. I mean... So, yeah, so, and like I said, there were poor black people, poor white people, but, but they thought, she thought she can go there, but also the main point was she didn't want her friends to see her there. That's why she wanted to go to a black neighborhood because she felt shame being poor, and she thought, well, she don't know anybody in the black part of the neighborhood, so our secret is safe. She was a bit, she was a bit of a snob, and she's still a snob today, but, you know, she's still alive. I let her. But here's the thing. So we go to like uh, this black neighborhood and get you know get all the food of the vouchers, get the get the really good cherry Kool Aid and the uh, you know the extra block of gum and cheese and all that, and um, we're going to there and all of a sudden, my mom my mom's name is Peggy and she's like, "Hey Peggy, I didn't know you and Brendan were here. Isn't this place great? They give you extra stuff here. I never thought about that." And my mom just turned red and just went. Went like that, and and I was like going, "Hi, Molly." You know, so yeah, I was just like, but that's the thing. It's just like people people need to humble themselves. And I hope this video made you laugh, and I hope it made you think. And uh, we just need to break the fourth wall, not only with racism, but also. Um, insecurity and uh and not knowing we all gotta know it's not about being awake folks it's about or being woke it's about understanding that we're all the same we all bleed red 
and we're no different than anybody else. But thank you very much for enjoying this video, and I love you guys, and uh, I'll uh, catch you later. Please subscribe, watch, rinse, repeat, and uh, sayonara.